Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Brian here. Um, so today I went to a bunch of, of Dollar Trees. Unfortunately, only one had stuff out. So, and then I went to Second and Charles and found quite a bit of uh, goodness and uh, Blu-ray goodness, so to speak. I didn't get any Blu -ray, uh, DVDs this time. And then on the way home, I stopped at a, another thrift store and I found three titles. So... I think I'll start with the thrift store. I only found three, the three titles here. Um, so I'll start with the one DVD that I found. Uh, I know this got a Blu-ray release overseas, or Australia, I think. Um, it is a film from 1991. It is in black and white. And color? It says black and white. Oh yeah, both black and white and color. It is from Paramount. It is Dead Again. I got it for three fifty. I don't know why it was three fifty. Usually these are two dollars a piece. But the disc was mint, and there is a, a, a um, there's a the uh, sorry, the scene selection inside, and then there's some sort of like uh, Paramount packet inside. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, it's just a guide of their other DVD releases back in 2001. Yeah, there's like a, like a mail-in on the back. That's funny. You don't, you don't see those at all anymore. But yeah, that was a good, good find. This one stars Andy Garcia, Emma Thompson, uh, Kenneth Bran Brana, I guess I say his name. It says, how many times can you die for love? Uh, this, yeah, um, oh, Kenneth also directed it. <clears throat> so he's the, I guess he's the lead in here and he also directed it. So that's interesting. Let me know if you've seen this. I've never seen it before. I'm sure it's good. Uh, next up, I found a film from 2005 starring Paul Walker and Jessica Elba with Josh Brolin, Scott Kahn, and Ashley Scott, directed by John Stockwell. It is Into the Blue. Um, the disc was pretty, was decent shape. I gotta spray it down, but that's it's the fingerprint on it. And inside you have uh, Elba and Walker. Rest in peace, Walker. Um, I've never seen this film before, to be honest, but I heard it was a decent thriller. And I like anything that deals with pirates and uh, treasure. Uh, then I found a brand new factory sealed copy of Collateral on Blu-ray. Give it a nice little rub. There you go, that sounds better. Um, I've seen this movie, it's pretty good. Um, uh, Tom Cruise plays a really good uh, villain in this film. And I like Jamie Foxx's character as well. This is put out by Michael Mann and Paramount. And if you've seen it, let me know if you liked it. I did. I also found a copy of Requiem for a Dream on Blu-ray, but someone had stolen the disc, so that was not cool. And I... I brought the case up front to tell the cashier that it wasn't in there, and she kind of got mad, but not at me, but at the person that stole it. Um, let's go with the Dollar Tree. I found, I think, 14 titles. Uh, I found a lot, but my brother picked up quite a few already, so I didn't really want to, you know, double dip, so to speak. Because I'm sure I'll see those over here eventually. Some of the ones he got, I wanted, actually wanted, so I'll, uh, yep, so I'm not going to go in any particular order. I have them split between Blu-ray and DVD. I got, um, seven DVDs and oh, seven Blu-rays. Imagine that. I didn't even do that. I just, that's just how it just happened that way. Uh, first up, I have a... Uh, two DVD set of 10 hours of car cartoons um, from Pop Flix. This was put out in, I believe, 2004. I don't know, the sticker's blocking it, so I can't tell. But uh, 
It is 100 family cartoons uh, featuring the th the new Three Stooges. That's why I got it because there's 26 episodes on here. You also get a uh, little Audrey cartoon party, Wacky and Packy, Clutch Cargo, Blackie, George Pal's Puppetoons, Rainbow Parade, Mr. Piper Storytime, Little Lulu, Mellow Tunes, Space Angel, and Colonel Bleep. I've never heard of any of these except for the three, the new Three Stooges. So, and it lists all 100 episodes on the back. Yeah, I don't know. I like I like Android cartoons, but the animation on here doesn't look the greatest. But whatever, it was the only copy they had. So, uh, next up is something that I've seen someone else pick up. Uh, who picked this up? No, I don't know. He didn't pick it up. I saw Cool Duder, cool Duder I found this at his uh, Dollar Tree. Uh, this one stars Kalik, Kalik, I can't say her name, Kaliko Cooper, Alice Cooper's daughter. Uh, it is a, a film called uh, 30 Proof Coil. I'm not too familiar with this, with this one. It's from 2010, 82 Minutes. Put out by Phoenix Pictures. Never heard of that label. Uh, it's a suspense th thriller. Uh, basically, uh, her character, she's kidnapped by a mysterious stranger and chained in an eerie, dilapidated barn. Unwilling to play the victim, she plots a daring escape with, uh, with thirst and hunger bearing down. Her grip on reality loosens. Can she free herself from the chain and the haunting visions? Uh, this film punches the audience right in the nose. Uh, this was directed, edited, and written by Will Schmeckpepper. I guess I say his name. Yeah, the... Yeah, so... There's the old barn. So this looks pretty cheap. But I'll give it a shot. Up next is uh, an Olive Films release. Uh, this is a black and white film from 1946, even though it shows like color on the back. That is so weird. Uh, I think this is a French film. I'm not. I think it's a French film. Maybe it's not. Uh, this is the original from yeah from 1946. Uh, it is called. Uh, Diary of a Chambermaid. It says it was remade in 1964. Uh, let's see here. Uh, legendary director Jean Renault. Renoy, I guess I say his name. Uh, film is a film version of Octave Merbu. His novel of Diary of a Chambermaid was adapted for the screen by uh, Burgess Meredith. Paulette Goddard plays the title character, a sexy and saucy servant named Clistine. Oh, Celestine, I say her name. Uh, whose forthrightness has a curious effect on a wealthy Paris Parisian household, Parsian household. Uh, determined to elevate her lot in life, uh, she uses her unsubtle charms to beguile the master of the household. Uh, Burgess Meredith delivers an astonishing performance as Captain Mauger. The bizarre and shelf-shocked neighbor and Judith Anderson is equally great as the mistress of the household. Sounds interesting. It's 86 minutes, not rated. I always, I always enjoy these uh, Olive Films releases, especially for a dollar. Uh, let me go ahead and get the other Olive Film out of the way. Uh, this is a this is a definitely a French film. Uh, black and White from 105 Minutes from 1963. It is in French with English subtitles. It is The Great Spy Chase here, uh, starring Lino Ventura. Bernard Blier and Francis uh, Blanche, directed by 
uh, Georges Lautner, written by Michael uh, Odiard, that's how I say his name. Uh, let's see here. This was filmed in France, West Germany, and Italy. <clears throat> uh, an infamous arms dealer bequeaths his castle and a, lar a large collection of his patents to his beautiful young widow. Uh, these valuable patents would give would give its beholder an edge in the international arm race. So the secret services from several countries are sent to retrieve th these priceless documents at any cost. Uh, the Fr French agent uh, Lenu, played by Lino Ventura, and under orders to seduce the heiress and retrieve the documents. It's spy versus spy in this hilarious, action-packed comedy. As these super agents try to outsmart each other and survive the other's deadly traps. Sounds pretty cool to me. I'm, I don't speak French, but I can read subtitles. I don't mind. Uh, up next is a... It's like a... Um, thriller sci-fi adventure and it looks like um, action packed as well um, where is this from 2002 or two, sorry 2001 released in 2002 it is a black mask 2 city of masks uh, who's in this Starring oh Tubman Bell's in here, that's cool. Uh, John Polito, Teresa Maria Herrera, Tyler Maine, Scott Atkins. Uh, don't recognize any uh, Sean Marquis, Marquis uh, Michael Bailey Smith. A bunch of people in here. It says a uh, hey, thrill. Thrill a minute sci-fi adventure from uh, director uh, Sui Hark, director of Knock Off and Double Team, and uh, martial arts director Yu Yu Wu Ping. He's the one that, that did the choreography for The Matrix, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Andy On takes on the role Jet Li made legendary in this action-packed sequel to 1999 genre classic. Also starring uh, Tracy Lords, Tyler Maine, John Polito, and WWF superstar Rob Van Dam. So before WWF went to WWE. Uh, searching for a cure for the biological abnormal or abnormality that gives him superpowers, Black Mask stumbles upon a terrorist group intent on dropping a DNA bomb on the human race. But in order to put a stop to their devious plan, he must first battle a group of chemically enhanced professional wrestlers with the ability to morph into monstrously powerful mutants. And they won't stop until the chemical makeup of the entire population is tweaked forever. Sounds like a fun ride. Uh, let's see, since this is an early 2000s DVD, let's see what the special features are. Digitally mastered audio and anamorphic video, widescreen presentation, audio 5.1 Dolby Digital, also available in French. Subtitles in English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Korean, and Thai. You get theatrical trailers, interactive menus, and scene selection. So you don't really get any special features on this. Uh, and there's the back. Uh, I've, I've seen this film before. This is a shout, a Scream Factory release from 2016 uh, it is Fender Bender I've seen this film before I gotta watch it again I haven't seen it since 2016 so uh, basically uh, this random dude here 
He stalks the streets remorsefully, brutal, bloodthirsty. When his prey is at his most vulnerable, he appears. When the night falls and all is quiet, he strikes, prepare for the next driving force in horror, fender bender. Um, 17 year old Hillary has just received her driver's license only to have her first accident shortly thereafter, innocently exchanging her personal information with the remorseful stranger behind the wheel. She returns home for a quiet evening with friends, but when the man who, to whom she so readily handed all her information reveals himself to be something much darker and sinister than she could imagine, Hillary finds herself in a head-on collision with terror. Uh, direct, this is directed by Mark Pavia. He's the one that directed The Night Flyer. Uh, Fender Bender is an intense crash and slash thriller that brings you back to the time when the boxes on the shelf at your local video store beckoned you with mask, knife-wielding maniacs, and a twist sense of morals. This is a really like this is a really cool thriller. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, and then the last DVD is a three disc, uh, yeah, I guess a, yeah, three disc set here of something that was really, really popular at Hot Topic back in the early, in the early 2000s. When did this come out? This is from 2005. I definitely remember it and seeing all those like random like stickers and just random stuff, posters. I don't think this is the complete set, but this is a seven seven hours of mind-numbing content. We have Happy Tree Friends Overkill. This is the only copy that they had, and I snagged it. Let me know if you down below if you remember those random like sayings like you make me your face makes me want to vomit or something, but it's silly. You get the three volumes, first blood, second serving, and third strike, plus five uh, big fat bonus episodes. Uh, yeah. Let me know if, yeah, seriously, let me know if you remember that. Okay, on to the Blu-rays. Uh, first up, this one I, I've seen people find. This is... A Timothy Woodward Jr. film. It is a gangster epic in the tradition of the Untouchables. When the city roared, Capone was king. It is gangster land. I definitely love mob films, especially ones that are based on true crime. The war for Chicago has begun. Uh, and during the height of the 1920s, Prohibition notorious gangster Al Capone recruits amateur boxer Machine Gun Jack McGurn to help fight the Irish and protect his empire on the crime-ridden streets of Chicago. When the Italian mob becomes the most lucrative criminal organization in the country, tensions build with Bugs Moran of the Irish Northside Gang, igniting the most brutal gang war the country has ever seen. Uh, this is put out by Synodyme, uh, 2017. Uh... Starring Sean Ferris, Milo Gibson, Jason Patrick, Jamie Lynn Siegler, and Peter Fasanelli. That's how you say his name. Uh, I definitely, definitely love anything that has to do with true crime and mob, the mob. So I don't know if this is like based on true events or not. It doesn't say that it is, but I'll watch it. Okay, up next is a magnet release from uh, 2013, uh, rated R, it is, how long is this film, does it even say on the back, 99 minutes, uh, this is called Hammer of the Gods with the slip, nice little flashy slip, I'd, I'd, pull it down but you know the damn stickers stuck there but I'll get it off uh, this takes place in Britain in 18 or sorry 871 AD a young Viking warrior Steiner uh, is I guess I say his name Steiner is sent by his father the king on a quest to find his estranged brother who was banished from the kingdom many years before 
Steiner's epic journey across terrifying hostile territory gradually seems sees him emerge as the man his father wants him to be, the ruthless and unforgiving successor to his throne. I enjoy these uh, like coming of age um, films from like the Viking era and whatnot. So check that out. Uh, up next is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack of a film noir from 2013 starring Matthew McConaughey, Zac Efron, Macy Gray, John Cusack, and John Kidman, or Nicole Kidman, I'm sorry. It is The Paperboy. I've seen a lot of people grab this. Uh, I've I've never seen it before, but I remember seeing it in, in stores when it came out. I think I don't know. I remember Target had it once back in the day. Uh, let's see. This takes place in the backwaters of steamy 1960s South Florida. Uh, as investigative reporter Ward Jansen, played by McConaughey, and his partner uh, Yardley Aikman. Played by David Oilowo. Oilowo. That's how you say his last name. Uh, they chase a sensational career making story. With the help of Ward's younger brother Jack, played by Zach Efron, uh, and sultry death row groupie Charlotte Bless, played by Kidman, the pair tries to prove violent swamp dweller Hilary Van Wetter, played by John Cusack was framed for the murder of a corrupt local sheriff. Uh, based on the provocative best-selling novel by uh, Pete Dexler, Dexter, he wrote Mulholland Falls and Rush, so that's cool. I enjoy both of those films. The paperboy uh, peels back a sleepy small town's decade-old facade of southern uh, gentility to reveal a quagmire of evil as dark as the Florida Bayou. Uh, looks interesting. I definitely like the cast on this one. Uh, up next is an upgrade for me. I bought the Blu-ray when it came out back in 2008. Yes, I remember when this came out. I was super excited for this film. And then I watched it and I was like, eh, it's not his best film. But it does complete his uh, uh, dead series, if you will. Uh, they had like five copies of this and only one with the lenticular slip. So, of course, I had the lenticular slip. It is Survival of the Dead by George A. Romero. You can see it here. It goes back and forth. The hand and then the zombie face. Uh, like I said, it's not his best, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I don't know if you want me to go into it or not. Uh, basically, it's just, it uh, takes, I think this, doesn't this take place like right after, uh, yeah, this takes place exactly right after uh, Diary of the Dead, which was eh, not great either, but it was okay. It was watchable. This takes place off the coast of Delaware on a small island. Um, Two families locked in a struggle for power and control over the fate of the undead. The O'Flins approach the zombie plague with a shoot-to-kill attitude. The Muldoons feel like the zombies should be quarantined and kept alive in hopes that a solution will be discovered. For both families, existence on Plum Island is a nightmarish world where humans are the minority and zombies rule. Uh, I remember one scene involving a horse. Sorry, Miranda. I would not watch this. You love, I know you love horses. I would not watch it. But, uh, there's no one really in here, um, uh, that I know of that, that looks familiar, but, like I said, this film was meh, but I'll watch it again once some someday. I definitely love the lenticular cover, though. Uh, up next is a film that everyone seems to be finding. I know Bryce found it, but I wanted one for myself. Uh, it is a Quentin Tarantino Presents film directed by Larry Bishop called Hellride. I know he picked it up already, so. <sighs> Basically, uh, 
There's a motorcycle gang involved, bent on avenging the death of one of their own. It doesn't really go in detail about exactly what's going on in this film, but we have uh, uh, Dennis Hopper, Eric Balfour, Michael Madsen, Vinny Jones, David Carradine, and I guess Larry Bishop is also in this film, the director. It looks pretty badass. Uh, next is a film that another upgrade for me that I haven't watched it yet, but it, it still sounds pretty cool. I, exactly, I, I really love the cast in here. Uh, we have from uh, Draft House Films, we get Cheap Thrills, starring Pat Healy, Sarah Paxton, Ethan Embry, and David Kochner, Koch, Kochner as I say his name. Uh, the guy from Anchorman and Krampus and just a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this is a dark comedy, dark comedic thriller, excuse me. Uh, let's see, uh, one night descent of two friends participating in a series of escalating uh, paid dares to entertain a wealthy couple with a twisted sense of humor. After down and out family man Craig, played by Pat Healy. Simultaneously loses his job and is served an eviction notice. He runs into his long-lost deadbeat pal, Vince, played by Ethan Embry, at a local dive bar. As the two drink their troubles away, they are lured by a couple celebrating, celebrating a birthday who shell out obscene wads of cash to Craig and Vince Six in exchange for taking on harmless bets. The party continues to a strip club and eventually to the couple's home where the cash payoffs increase wildly as the challenges become more outrageous, hilarious, illegal, and even downright inhuman. Drugs and laughter give way to sex, firearms, felonies, and self-destruction. By sunrise, Craig and Vince will learn exactly how far they're willing to go for both big money and cheap thrills. Uh, this is from 2013, 85 minutes, put out by... Draft House Films and Cynodyne. And the last title from Dollar Tree that I found today is an animated film <clears throat> based on the graphic novel uh, based that's uh, a modern steampunk twist on the classic Oz mythology. We have the Steam Engines of Oz. Starring the voice talents of Ron Perlman, William Shatner, uh, Julian Ho. And that's all that is, the credits on the back here. Uh, written and directed by Sean Patrick O'Reilly. 2018. 79 minutes. Uh, put out by Cynodyne. Everyone knows the story of Wizard of Oz, so I won't really tell them to talk about it. Okay, and then Second and Charles was definitely a hit today. I found way too many titles on Blu-ray. No DVDs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 titles. One for my brother because I already have it. Uh, like six bucks for Little Monsters on Blu-ray with the slip and the digital code is still inside. That is so weird, right? Maybe someone used it though, but... It is pretty minty. It just needs to be cleaned. It's just got fingerprints on it. Uh, next one is an upgrade for me. I have the DVD of this film. Still haven't watched it, though. We have The Shed. Uh, written and directed by Frank Sabatella. Basically, these two friends have been putting up with bullies for their entire lives, and then one of them discovers a murderous vampire living in his shed. So weird, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, he he knows he must destroy it, but his, uh, his friend has a much more sinister plan. I guess they plan on feeding their enemies to the vampire. Okay. Uh, we have reversible artwork inside. Uh, it's got the little vampire's hand coming out of the shed. Same same artwork on the back. 
Let me know if you've seen this or any of the films I'm talking about today. Uh, up next is a film, a uh, independent film, or of course, put out by Art Exploitation Films in 2020. Yep, there's that uh, that damn year again. Sorry, Marie. <laughs> Uh, we have Welcome to the Circle. That is a face only a mother can love. It says love and blessing, love and blessings. You are safe. Yeah, right. Not with that face. Uh, what is this about? A nightmarish, creepy, trippy, almost Lynchian Canadian horror film. Canadian, eh? Uh, a camping misadventure forces a young girl and her father into the realm of a demon worshiping cult known as the Circle. Oh, Jesus. As the pair became, become trapped in the Circle's increasingly frightening sphere of indoctrination, escape is the only objective, but they are trapped in the Circle. 93 minutes from 2019. Uh, yeah, it looks interesting. Uh, no artwork inside. It is, I think this is a BDR. No, it's just a regular, regular, uh, regular Blu ray. So, yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, next is a film that I was really interested in, and this was in the documentary section. Uh, this is a film. I thought it was uh, put out by Severin because of the black case, but it is not. It is put out by the film detective. Uh, from 1971, black and white, 81 minutes. We have The Other Side of Madness. This is a documentary about Charles Manson. Uh, actually, no, it's not, it not a documentary. It is an avant-garde retelling of the infamous Manson murders. Uh, oh, okay, it is kind of a documentary, but you get, um, it says, uh, brings audiences closer to the events than most filmmakers have dared to go with real life footage of Spawn Ranch and music performed by Charles Manson himself. Directed by Frank Howard and produced by Wade Williams, this hypnotic film served as one of the first Helter Skelter recreations, filmed so close to the time of the events that Manson and his followers had yet to be sentenced for the vicious crimes. Including the new documentary, The Other Side of Manson, an interview with producer Wade Williams and other exclusive special features. You get original trailers from both theatrical releases. And as a bonus, you get a uh, CD in here with songs written and performed by Charles Manson. Boy, oh boy. Uh, I've never seen it before, but I've seen quite a few uh, re re renditions of what happened. So, and I know the whole story and whatnot. So, yeah. Up next is a film that I'd never heard of. It's another independent release from 2019. Uh, 82 minutes. This was put out by uh, uh, Epic Pictures, Dread, and Devil Works. This is a cult romantic hit of 2019, but is also a beautifully crafted mystery. It is called The Fair. A Fair to Remember. I definitely love that, that cover. Uh, let's see here. What is this about? Uh, when a charming woman named Penny climbs into his taxi, Harris finds himself entranced. That is, right up until she disappears from the back seat without a trace. As he desperately tries to make sense of what happened, he resets his meter and is instantly brought back 
to the moment she first climbed into his cab. From there on, the pair find themselves trapped in an endlessly looping ride that changes their lives forever. Kind of reminds me of, uh, what is that, that one urban legend in Chicago? What's it called? The Phantom Rider or something? I don't remember. Or Rose Rosemary? Something like that. Let me know. Comments below. I remember. I have so many you know, urban legend films I've watched over the years. But, uh, you get audio commentary by the director and, of course, the writer and star of the film, uh, Brenna Kelly. She plays, um, she plays Penny. You get the an original opening, uh, extended sequences, and making no featurette, and uh, trailers. Definitely, definitely want to watch that one. Uh, up next is an upgrade for me. It's another Shutter original from 2017. This is um, man, this this film is in English and in Mandarin. It is called Mon 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 Monsters. Uh, let's see here. It's another it's another film about bullying and getting revenge. A group of classmates doing community service discover two flesh-eating creatures hiding in an old building. One of the creatures is able to escape, but they capture the other one, torturing her while trying to learn what she really is. It soon becomes clear that the first creature's escape has dire consequences as she haunt, hunts them down and stops at nothing to freak her sister. I guess they're zombies, kind of, in a way. I'm not sure. This is put out by R.O.J.E. Entertainment Films. It's almost two hours long. It looks it looks interesting. Let me know if you've seen that. Uh, next is a film that I might have to take back because the disc is it's a it's a burn on demand disc, but there are some like light scratches on this. But I don't know. Uh, it's a film from Grafitas Ventures. It is a drama. Uh, let's see who's in here. Chloe Levine. Um, that's the only one I recognize. Uh, it is. Uh, this is takes place during the grunge era in the early '90s. It is called No Alternative. I think there's a compilation called No Alternative, right? I think. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, this is a coming-of-age drama that blasts open the world of grunge-era teenagers in the early 90s. Uh, Thomas Harrison is determined to start his own alternative band after the suicide of Kurt Cobain. It's an obsession that blinds him to what's either the mental collapse or the eruption of musical genius of his little sister, Bridget. Bridget boldly rejects her brother's music and the music of an entire generation of slackers by taking on the persona of a gangster rapper named Bree the Bee. Okay. Definitely want to check this one out. Like I said, the disc is kind of scratched on the back. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, see on the, that side right there where the light is, you can see it. But uh, we'll see. I left the sticker on the back, so if I have to return it, I will within the next 30 days, I think is what their policy is. Uh, up next is a film that everyone has seemed to either enjoy or think it's really bad. It is basically, this is a Chris, this is considered a Christmas movie because it involves Santa Claus and whatnot. Starring Mel Gibson and Walton Walton Goggins, it is Fat Man, I think. Yeah, the digital code's still inside, which is weird. Usually if you find these uh, used, you don't find the digital code. Uh, everyone knows this. Uh, uh, to save his declining business, uh, Chris Kringle, played by Mel Gibson, uh, is forced into a partnership with the U.S. military. Making matters worse, uh, Chris gets locked into a deadly battle of wits against a highly skilled assassin hired by a 12-year-old after receiving a lump of coal in his stocking. Tis the season for Fat Man to get even in an action comedy that keeps on giving. 
Uh, let me know if you've seen this and what you thought about it. Up next is a film that I've been, been waiting for for the price to drop on Amazon for probably three years now and it hasn't dropped but I found it for a little less than half price so I scooped it up out of time without a clue uh, this is put out by Dark Sky Films it is Mega Time Squad uh, let's see here <clears throat> 2018 80 minutes written and directed by Tim Von Damp Domin uh, don't recognize anybody in the cast but anyway, this is about a low-level criminal, John, uh, dreams of getting together enough money to move out of his dead-end town of uh, Thames, New Zealand, and start his own gang. So when his boss, Shelton, has him rip off a triad cash drop at a local Chinese antique store, John decides to double-cross his boss and take the loot for himself, along with a mysterious Chinese amulet. While Shelton's goons quickly catch on to his betrayal, snatch back the cash, and try to do him in, John just as quickly discovers the power of the amulet, an ancient Chinese time travel device. It enables him to elude their clutches by slipping back two minutes in time. Uh, there is a catch, though. It creates a replica of John in the process. John is initially delighted by the discovery and sets out to create a small army of duplicates the Mega Time Squad, to help him retrieve the loot. But this reckless use of the amulet also summons an ancient Chinese demon. As, ten and as tensions between the Johns grow, and with the demon and Shelton hot on their trail, the Johns must decide what really matters to save the day and get the girl. Uh, he's on the back, and he's when he's robbing when he's robbing the store, he's got a duck mask on. I've seen the trailer, and the trailer was hilarious, so... Can't wait to give that a watch. There is no in, uh, inside artwork, just the disc is pretty much the same as the cover. But yeah, it looks looks like a fun watch. I think it's actually from from New Zealand, I think. Up next is an upgrade for me. I have the DVD of this film. This is also another art exploitation film. This is from the Netherlands. It's in English. Uh, it's Mad Max meets Turbo Kid. It is called Molly. Uh, let's see here. In a barren landscape ravished by war, Molly, a superpower young woman, roams the violent post-apocalyptic landscape, armed only with a bow and arrow, when a sadistic ringmaster who runs an underground fight club hears of her supernatural abilities. He sends his sociopathic martyrs to capture her and make her a star attraction in his cage fights to the death. You got a making of, that's 30 minutes, uh, director's commentary, and other uh, film trailers from Artsploitation. Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go here. Hopefully this is not an hour, We're already 43 minutes in. Uh, next is a film put out by Film Movement. This is a 1980 film from the UK. Uh, this is a, I guess this is a coming of age film from director Bill Forsyth, who directed Local Hero. I believe that has a Criterion, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't watched that one though. It is called Gregory's Girl. Uh, basically. Gregory is an awkward, hormone-fueled Scottish teenager who has fallen hard for Dorothy, the first female player on his school soccer team. A newcomer of a game of love, Gregory has no idea how to pursue the object of his affection, and shockingly, the only person who can offer any constructive advice is his 10-year-old sister. When he finally musters the courage to ask Dorothy on a date, nothing turns out as expected. But if you're an eternal optimist like Gregory, somehow things work out in the end. Uh, the acclaimed second feature from Bill Forsyth. Gregory's Girl was the winner of the 1982 BAF 
BFTA Award for Best Original Screenplay and was named one of the 50 best high school movies of all time by Entertainment Weekly. Uh, you get a, a bunch of features on here. You get an audio commentary with the director and... Uh, I don't know, some other guy, Mark Kermode. Doesn't say what he what he is, though. Uh, you get uh, the director, uh, an interview with the director. Uh, two Actually, two interviews with the director. You get an interview with uh, the actress that, I guess, uh, I don't know. Yeah, another actress, uh, Claire Grogan. Uh, an essay by film scholar Jonathan Murray, and then you get an alternate U.S. and French dub versions. Uh, inside, we have back artwork, and you get a nice little packet about the about the movie, and then you get the uh, you get the two leads together there, and of course the disc. Uh, the packet here has. Uh, an SI uh, chapters, you get a nice little uh, cast credits, um, a nice little essay inside, digital stills from the movie, um, yep. yeah, looking, definitely looking forward to that one. I like to mix it up with horror and then, you know, our other stuff. I mean, horror is my favorite, but I like to mix it up. Speaking of mixing it up, this is another, I believe this just came out from Paramount Presents. I found it for $11. <clears throat> this is a film from 1952, uh, directed by uh, Cecil DeMille. It is the greatest show on earth with the with the, with the slip, and also you can see the original poster art there. Uh, who's in this? We got... <laughs> Charlton Heston, Jimmy Stewart, Betty Hutton, uh, Dorothy Lamore, Cornell Wilde, and you get the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey in here as well. I believe Jimmy Stewart plays a clown. <laughs> I think he's right there. It's creepy, isn't it? Uh, this is, I think this is, yeah, this is 152 minutes, so two and a half hours. Uh, basically about the circus. So, yeah. I've never seen this film, but it intrigued me. And I actually, they had a lot of Paramount pictures there, but I didn't pick them all up because I didn't want to spend two hundred dollars today. They had The Haunting, they had Love Story, which I just got Love Story on a DVD like a week ago. So yeah, slip is the same as the cover art, and then you have you have the digital code, which probably won't work. And then you have some nice little back artwork inside. Uh, up next is an upgrade for me. Uh, I got the DVD a while ago for cheap. And I came across the Blu-ray with the nice little embossed slip. Uh, the slip has seen a little bit better days. It has The edges are a little damaged, but that's okay. It is Come Play. The slip. Um, still haven't still haven't watched it yet, but I heard it was really good. Uh, it's about a young boy who feels different from everybody else, seeks solace and refuge in his in his ever present cell phone and tablet. When a mysterious creature uses Oliver's devices against him to break into our world, Oliver's parents must fight to save their son from the monster beyond the screen. Uh, PG thirteen from Universal from uh, 20 no, it came out this year 2021 I think it I think it was from 2020 though if I'm not mistaken yeah 2020 that damn year again sorry for bringing that up Murray 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is a film that just came out like two weeks ago from ROJE Entertainment. 111 minutes from, I won't say it is from, it is from that year, but it was released this year, 2021. We have The Reckoning. Uh, this is about the time of witches in England. Uh, and also during the Great Plague, I guess I remember like her husband passes away. And then she's unjustly accused of being a witch, placed in the custody of England's most ruthless witch hunter. She's forced to endure physical and emotional torture while steadfastly maintaining her innocence. She must face her inner demons as the devil himself starts to work his way into her mind. So it's a nice little revenge thriller. I think that's just the, yeah, the disc and then always with the shutter insert. I've heard mixed reviews on this one. Some people really love it. I, I believe there's uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it is. Uh, and another Shudder original film here uh, with the slip. This was put out this year, uh, last year. <clears throat> I'll refer to that as last year. Uh, it is the pale door with the slip. Uh, from the writer of Bubba Hotep and Cold in July. This looks like it's a western uh, involving witches. Uh, the Dalton gang find shelter in this seemingly uninhabited ghost town after a train robbery goes south. Seeking help from their wounded leader, they are surprised to stumble upon a welcoming brothel in the town square, but the beautiful women who greet them are actually a coven of witches with very sinister plans for the unsuspecting outlaws, and the battle between good and evil is just beginning. Uh, Pat Healy's in here from uh, the Cheap Thrills, I just went over that one. Also starring Devin Druid, Zachary Knighton, Bill Sage, Natasha Bassett, Stan Shaw, and Melora Walters. Uh, directed by Aaron Kutz. Uh, two more titles and I will be done here. Uh, this, is, this one was also put out this year by ROJE Entertainment. Uh, I believe this was... Um, this is an anti-hero film written and directed by Adam Egypt Mortimer. It is Arch Enemy here. Uh, starring Joe, I can't never say his, his name right, Manganiello, Manganiello. I probably butchered that, I'm sorry. With the slip. Uh, basically, this uh, guy is a local drunk who claims to be a superhero from planet Chromium. He tells everyone who will listen that he was pulled into a wormhole, falling through time and space, dropped to Earth without any of his powers. No one pays any attention to him except for a teenager named Hamster. Hamster? Not Hamster. Hamster. Uh, who can't get enough of his stories. When Ham Hamster and his sister get in trouble with a vicious drug syndicate, led by the manager. Max takes to the streets as a brutal vigilante hellbent on proving himself as the hero no one believes him to be. I heard this film is like, kind of as, as filmed in the sense of Mandy. Like dark and like colors, like pink, pinks and dark blues. So definitely, definitely want to check that out. It is 90 minutes, 90 minutes long here. All right, guys, last title here, and I will be done. All right. Uh, everyone probably has already seen this film, except me. I haven't seen it yet. It is the Train to Busan, um, quote-unquote, sequel, Peninsula, with the nice slip. Uh, this takes place four years after the events in Train to Busan. A former soldier returns to the peninsula on a secret mission. 
When his team encounters survivors, their lives will depend on whether the best or worst of human nature prevails. So the zombies are still, the zombie apocalypse is still happening over in um, Korea, South Korea. So it's also, this is also in English too. So yeah, definitely can't wait to check that one out. Okay, guys, I think that's enough for today. Um, if you haven't checked that other video I posted yesterday, the hour long going over some of my um, my Blu-rays, let me know if I should continue that or not. I know it took a long time to film, and I talk a lot in that uh, film that uh, video. So let me know if you want me to continue that or not. I'm not sure if I will, but maybe I'll do it a little a little bit at a time instead of a box at a time. So. Anyway, guys, take care, stay safe, happy hunting, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.